Four long years after it was announced, Rhyme is finally on its way. It's lived through the difficulties of a still very secretive breakup with Sony. It's persisted through times where almost everybody thought that this game is either dead or some elaborate kind of scam. And it's come out the other side looking, well, really bloody lovely, actually. I don't need to tell you how pretty this game is because you can see it for yourself. And it's actually strikingly close to the look and the feel of that very first announcement trailer from 2013. The opening of the game has a very Mediterranean feel to it, with the deceptive brilliance to the light grey stones that the structures are made out of, but then they're bleached white in the intensity of the sunlight. Though trees and bushes are green, they contrast to the brown rocks and the yellow of the grass that manages to survive the heat. However, this is all accompanied by the gorgeously clear blue skies and the perfectly blue ocean that surrounds the island. And then there's just the sounds and the waves of the seagulls that befit a coastal setting. Exploring this area, I find that there's actually an awful lot of shouting involved in the game. You guide this young boy around the world, running to explore new areas with his kind of ungainly gait, clambering up ledges and trying to find out just where it is that you can actually go to. You can't actually attack anything in this game, and there's not really anything to attack. And while the boy looks like a heroic adventurer, his red cape trailing behind him, he doesn't have any weapons, not even a wooden sword to bop things in the world with. Instead, he shouts, bringing his hands up to cup his mouth and amplifying his HA! And while that might seem a little ineffective, it's these shouts that resonate with some of the interactive elements in the world. That's one of the key points of the puzzling in this game, as you search for the little blue statues to shout at, figuring out what they do and how they interact with one another. Sometimes there's glowing balls to pick up and place on pedestals, other times there's sound amplifying blocks that you can move around the world, trying to find just the right spot to let you trigger multiple statues at once. Your sole companion through all of this is a small and magical fox. Its visual design with a bright orange coat and white chest, paws and the tip to its tail is more reminiscent of the kind of idealised version of the foxes that love to rummage through your rubbish and make all sorts of horrendous noises while you're trying to sleep. But its diminutive stature, its big ears and its ceaseless yapping are much more reminiscent of fennec foxes. It's magical though, and it leaves this trail of confetti behind it as it bounds up a set of stairs leading you in one direction before then, poof, just turning into thin air. What we played was not quite the game's opening, but rather the final section of this particular area, and we were soon descending into the darkness, chasing after a figure in the distance. It's a figure that wears a red cape, funnily enough, so there might be some kind of familial link between that character and the boy. That reminded me a little bit of that game company and Giant Sparrow's work, with their more experiential games pushing you to explore, but leading you off in a certain direction in various different ways. There's also something rather reminiscent of Journey in the way that there's imagery daubed on the walls and across the environment, and that the story is suggested to you through this rather than through lengthy exposition. In fact, beyond the shouting, there doesn't seem to be any talking in this game at all. That Mediterranean style only really holds true in that first area, and as you pass through this darkness of an underground or internal part of one of the structures, you eventually emerge out into an area that has been ravaged by heat. It's no longer just arid, but it's actually been seared of foliage, the ground having been baked into a deep red and the sheer heat making the image shimmer. It's not just the sun that has ravaged this land, but there's also this giant winged beast that soon comes to terrorise the boy. With just a few moments of fleeing from cover to cover before my time in the game was up, I soon discovered that shouting isn't so useful against this creature, and without the ability to fight back there's this extra panic there's this extra dramatic shift to the game. Though we were able to venture into new areas that we hadn't seen before, I still think that we're scratching the surface with Rhyme. What's nice is how this is a game that defies the expectations. There's no combat here, so you can't really compare it to The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, which is one of the touch points that many people had from the visual style. There's so much more puzzling to the game as well, and there's multiple contrasting styles to the environment that you go through. If it already caught your eye, then Rhyme is absolutely a game to keep an eye on when it comes out in May, and I know that I personally cannot wait to get back into this game and explore the world. 
that's all for this video and i hope you've enjoyed this look at rhyme it is shaping up to be absolutely lovely so give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed what you've seen here or subscribe if you'd like to check out the rest of our future content as always there's tons of videos here that you can watch or you could head over to the sixthaxis.com and visit us for our written content i hope you'll join us again soon and i will just simply say goodbye